On the line with us is Julio Rivera. He is the editorial director of Reactionary Times. He's a columnist for Newsmax, The American Thinker, and Town Hall. ReactionaryTimes.com is the website. And if you would like to tweet him, and people often do after our conversations, his Twitter handle is, oh yeah, it's Julio. O-H-Y-E-A-H-I-T-S-J-U-L-I-O. Julio, welcome back. Thank you so much for having me, Tom. I, I hope, my friend, you are well. Um, uh, the, the, the issue I wanted to discuss with you is, uh, you know, I've been, uh, I'm on, as you know, uh, Donald Trump's email lists and, and, uh, uh, and the White House email lists and all this other stuff. And one of the messages that I've been getting uh, periodically, it seems to happen about once a week, there'll be some rant about how, you know, Bernie Sanders and the Democrats want to give free health care uh, that you're paying for to those illegal immigrants who are sneaking into the country. And, uh, you know, I have an argument for why actually we should do that. Um, but I'm wow. curious your thoughts on this. Well, I mean, Tom, um, to me, it's just basic economic issue. I mean, we have a finite system, uh, a certain number of, of fixed taxpayers. I think that when you allow for something like that and you make it be known to the rest of the world that we're going to go ahead and grant, uh, you know, Medicare for all uh, for undocumented citizens, you're just going to open, you know, uh, the floodgates to people coming to this country from all over the world trying to seek that free health care. And, and who's really going to pay for it? I mean, I was looking at numbers in, in 2015, the total federal budget was 3.6, I'm sorry, $4.2 trillion, $4.2 trillion. Um, we collected in, in total, you know, the total amount of taxes that we, uh, federal taxes that we collected was $3.6 trillion. So we ran a deficit of uh, $600 billion. I mean, could you imagine the kind of deficits that we're going to run if we're going to go ahead and pretty much make it be known to the rest of the world that anyone who just happens to cross into our borders will be entitled to, you know, really very, very expensive you know, the, the Medicare for all, uh, you know, health care is very expensive in this country. And, you know, people coming in from different countries that haven't had the same level of health care up to the point where they enter, they haven't had the vaccinations, they may be carrying diseases. There was a big problem in the Minneapolis area when they accepted a whole bunch of Somali refugees uh, back a few years ago, where I, I think it was something somewhere around 85 percent of them were carrying this parasite that was very expensive to clear out of their body. And these are people who up to that point hadn't paid a penny into the system. And, and over 90 percent of those people also wound up getting on welfare and food stamp programs. So, I mean, we listen, we're very generous. We're the country that probably leads the world. I think uh, I, I know for a fact, sorry, we lead the world in total legal immigration. I think we're doing enough. I mean, I don't think that that's something that we really need to grant people. But I would love to hear your argument as to why. Sure. My argument as to why is, um, uh, you know, I, I was in Australia and I got sick. I got uh, Giardia, which is a, a parasite, actually. It's a, it, it, get, it infects water supplies. It's just the most god-awful uh, uh, food poisoning that you can imagine. And uh, they treated me for free. The, the total bill was 25 bucks, and that was for the medication that killed the parasite, and, um, which I, I got down at the pharmacy down the street. But seeing the doctor cost me absolutely nothing. And the reason why is because Australia doesn't want sick people walking around inside Australia. I mean, you know, if you're sitting in a, in a, uh, a Chipotle or in a, a McDonald's or, you know, whatever, you're sitting in a restaurant um, in, in, uh, in Brooklyn and um, the person next to you is, uh, you know, has tuberculosis or has coronavirus, God forbid, um, and, they, and they are highly contagious, but they can't seek medical care because they're not here legally. Uh, how do you think that's a good thing? Every other country in the world, I, 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 got, I got sick in Germany once. I ended up in the hospital. I thought I wasn't sick. I thought I was having a heart attack. Cost me absolutely nothing. And that was for CAT scans and everything. I mean, it was just a major workup. Um, uh, and, and my daughter got sick in England once. It was an ear infection. It wasn't something that's highly contagious. But um, again, the doctor came to the house. Actually, he made a house call and gave her the, the, the uh, uh, it was amoxicillin, the antibiotic to knock it out. And there, there was no charge at all because, again, none of these countries want there to be sick people in their countries. It's a public health issue, Julio. Well, I mean, I understand what, when, what you're trying to say, but I think it, it, the bigger issue 
is the fact that, you know, we're not securing our borders and, you know, we can potentially have people walk into this country that may be carrying these diseases and they may spread them. And, you know, God forbid we have an outbreak like they're having right now in China where, you know, you've got thousands of people sick with this coronavirus, which they probably developed in a laboratory. Who knows? But I don't want to speculate on that. That's not the conversation that we're having. Um, you know, Thank ultimately, you. I think that the cost, like, you know, you're talking about the cost in those other countries. It's a lot cheaper. You know, ever since, you know, the, 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 the further, you know, left um, attempted to try this uh, government health care uh, system, you know, with Obamacare, it seems that the cost of health care has only gone up in America, you know, with the mandatory minimums, the so-called essential benefits and everything like that. It wound up costing people more in this country, which, you know, that's actually kind of the opposite of what we want to create. Like right now, you're broadcasting from a university full of young people. Who are the people that really got um, hurt the worst in, in this government health care system that uh, Barack Obama tried to uh, uh, institute. It was really young people because young people no longer could just get catastrophic coverage for less than $100 a month. I had friends that were, you know, about in their mid-20s paying 400 to $500 a month for, you know, coverages, you know, under the, uh, the, the essential benefits that they would never use. I mean, I had a friend, he was a male, 25 years old. Why is he paying for mammograms and pap smears and gender reassignment surgery that he's never going to have and paying $500 a month? You know, it's not really fair to young people. Um, the, the, pat, the previous system we had, I just read a report claiming somehow that Medicare for all would somehow save uh, America money. It was a, a study. I don't know if you saw this. It was conducted by Yale University, uh, the University of Maryland, and I believe another school. Did you see that, Tom? Yeah, and th I did. And there's, there was another one that was published uh, earlier this week in The mm -hmm. Lancet, the British medical journal that is considered the gold standard for the world. And they did a year-long examination of Medicare for All in the United States, and they concluded that not only would it save us about a trillion dollars a year, um, but it also would save 68,000 American lives every single year. Um, That's and, what they say, but uh, where have we heard this before, Tom? I mean, think the about reason, it. Didn't they the say reason, the same thing about Obamacare? Didn't they say that a family of four would save... You know, uh, um, uh, what was it like? Thirty-five. According to Harvard University, year, Obamacare five hundred dollars a year more. Obamacare, uh, according to Harvard University, Obamacare save is saving right now on the order of twenty to twenty-five thousand lives a year. Um, you know, because because of Medicaid expansion and Medicaid is you know the government is a single payer health care system. Um, I'm you know I'm with you, Julio. I'm not a big fan of Obamacare's. Um, you know, subsidies to the for-profit insurance companies. I, I don't like the for-profit insurance companies. I don't think that they should exist. But the reason why your 25-year-old should be paying into the system exactly the same as somebody who's 60 years old is the same reason that your 25-year-old should be paying into Social Security, just, just like a 60-year-old, because we're all in this together. And if we're not all in this together, if we don't all chip in throughout the process, then, then the system falls apart, and then okay. we don't have a social safety net, and we don't have, you know, not, we don't have anything to catch us when we fall, if we get sick, or if there's an epidemic uh, yeah, okay. of coronavirus, God forbid. We have that, Tom, but uh, to a certain extent already, because, you know, different individual states have the way that they go ahead and, and, and um, you know, orchestrate or, or go ahead and administrate the, the Medicaid system. But the fact of the matter is, if you want to drive down costs, you got to provide more choices to people. So, I mean, the, you know, the, the, the essential benefits make it a lot more expensive for younger people where they could, per, you know, potentially purchase the services that they really need, you know, a la carte, so to speak, and, and get back to where it used to be. I mean, when I was young, I only paid about $100 a month for, for um, catastrophic insurance, and I was covered just fine. You know, and, and I, young people, unfortunately, <laughs> no longer have that option. Yeah, you're, you're a lot younger than me, Julio. When I was young, back in the 70s, 60s and 70s, I was paid $35 a month for comprehensive Blue Cross Blue Shield that covered everything. But, any, but sure they were required were. by law to be a nonprofit.